it's really exciting uh, to walk on land that you know is permanently protected, but even more importantly, look at wildlife that you know has safe refuge because that is so rare, particularly when we're talking about prairie wildlife. That's really exciting to be able to actually see and touch, you know, what we are accomplishing. It's not theoretical. Uh, it's not something that can be reversed. It's permanent progress for the prairie. Here in Southeast Colorado, it's a biodiversity hotspot. Uh, scientists from all over recognize that this is a very special place. Uh, most of the grassland remains intact. It's never been plowed. And there's also a lot of different habitat. It sustains a wide diversity of plants and animals, some of whom are found no place else on Earth. So we absolutely fell in love with Southeast Colorado. We've protected it ever since. And as a result, you can actually see the outlines of this preserve um, on Google Earth. We have six wildlife preserves. Um, altogether, our preserve network covers uh, over 32,000 acres, all of it uh, for the wild ones, uh, for native animals and plants to have permanent sanctuary. So one of the things that most people don't realize when they look at a short grass prairie and they see this tiny plant sticking above ground is that it's only the tip of the iceberg. Many of these prairie grasses and prairie wildflowers have root systems that are six feet or more underground and they're incredibly dense roots. So most of the biomass on the prairie is underground and hidden from sight. But what that means is that when we go through a drought period, they just kind of withdraw, hang out underground, wait their time. When the rains come, which they do eventually, and the conditions are right, they spring to life and you have the things blooming all over the prairie. And it's all because of that deep root system and, and what's happening underground. Nothing was as destructive to the prairie as the barbed wire fence. And Fortunately, since we're working with bison, they move themselves and they don't need pastures, which lets me rip out miles of fencing. And nothing makes the prairie look better and more free, like a, like a land-based ocean, than to get those rectangular grid patterns off the prairie and let the animals like ebb and flow with the vegetation. We're really emphatic about gaining ground for prairie wildlife in that uh, that's the least we can do uh, for these animals and it's the most we can do for these animals to just continually be expanding our network of short grass prairie preserves to provide more refuge uh, for more wildlife continually. Driving through the uh, what's the Longhorn and Donkey and Horses pasture, so sort of all our domestic herd. So that we have them um, uh, to provide them a home for the rest of their lives, but they're not it, they're not native part of the native biodiversity of the, of the place. So the Longhorn had been rescued from slaughterhouses, feedlots, and they needed a permanent sanctuary home and a. a Summerly Foundation gave us money to buy the land. So the Longhorn sort of paid for this pasture. Um, the, the wild horses 
they are like on their third bounce with humanity. They were captured from the wild by the BLM, adopted once by people, turned in, um, starved them, and they were seized by law enforcement. And now they're here. Um, so when they first arrived, they were emaciated. And we spent a lot of time trying to fatten them up. The, the basic organizational mission is to acquire land for prairie wildlife and particularly the Longhorn, providing the Longhorn a home, helped us acquire the land for the wildlife. And, and the Longhorn will eventually pass away and the land will still be here. This is really a group effort. I look at it as um, a lot of people getting together and pooling our resources uh, to do much more for prairie wildlife than any one of us could uh, individually. And the fact that it is so tangible, we're talking about um, land that's about $400 an acre. Uh, so, you know, if someone gives us a gift of $400, they're protecting basically a football field forever. Uh, and there's very few places in the U United States that you can say that about. <laughs> so the most exciting thing for me um, working with Southern Plains Land Trust is their vision for the future and the fact that it's happening. But this is something on the ground, very real and very tangible. And to be able to preserve large landscapes, large expanses of prairie, which is what the wildlife needs, the bison and the pronghorn, they need these huge expanses. And that's, to me, that's the most exciting thing, is it is happening, it's happening now, and we all have the opportunity to be a part of it. Well, we welcome everyone to get involved. Come to our website, learn about us. Um, obviously, your donations, whether it's $25 or $25,000, all goes towards purchasing this land and helping heal the land and making a real difference for prairie wildlife. You can also get involved with volunteering your time if you live in the state and want to connect with us to come down for a work party, help rip out that barbed wire fence. We welcome you know, new supporters to just learn more about what we have going on uh, because it makes so much sense and it's really hard to disagree with. We're using the private property and free market um, to achieve uh, just this incredibly important, tangible and permanent progress for prairie wildlife.